everybody. I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on PicMonkey. You can find that on PicMonkey.com. This is actually a great online tool that's free that you can use for editing your photos. So um, if you have Instagram photos, if you have photos for your blog, your website, this is a great place to go if you need a free editing tool. So um, I'm not going to get into every little nook and cranny of PicMonkey. I'm just going to do the, the basics. So in order to start, you can either click on this edit option here or you can drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop and my photo is here on my desktop. I'm going to drag this in and what you want to do is drop image to edit. Okay, so here is my image here. Now, if you needed a specific size, you can go to the resize option here on the bottom left, and you can actually choose anything that you want. Um, the 2209 by 3323, that's actually pretty large. Um, for the purposes that I want to use it for would be for my blog. And the normal size that I use for my blog is 700 by whatever. So I'm just going to type 700 for the width and click apply. So now my photo has been resized. Now you can also, if you change your mind, there is a back button in order for you to undo the change that you just made. So up at the top, you can click on the undo. And if you go back to resize, it went back to the initial size of the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the original size. And what I want to do now is kind of make the photo seem a little bit more proportionate or it looks like it's kind of on an angle right now. So I want to change that so that it looks a little normal. So in order to accomplish that, you can go to the rotate option here on the left hand side and it'll uh, it'll let you adjust the photo you can go to the right you can make it upside down however you want it so I'm going to rotate it to the left a little bit and now it seems a little bit straighter than what it was so I'm going to once I get it where I want it I'll just click apply and then what I want to do next is crop the photo because up here, I don't really want the ceiling part. So I'm going to crop the photo to get the exact area that I want. So over on the left hand side of the menu at the top is the crop option. option. So it lets you choose different different um, sizes. You can do a square, which is ideal for Instagram. You can do um, three by four, three by five, whatever you want, or you can actually enter your own um, dimensions. And if you don't know the dimensions that you want per se, you can actually click on the box inside of the photo and resize it yourself to where you feel you want it to be. So I'm going to resize this so where it looks somewhat decent. And like I said, I am no professional. This is a, a quick tool for me to use to edit photos for my blog. It's not like super high quality editing. I just, it's enough for me to get by because I can't afford professional um, editing tools like Photoshop, nor do I know how to use Photoshop. So, <laughs> um, so I selected that space and I'm going to click apply and it cropped the photo for me. Now, if it's still not to your liking, um, which this is not, I'm going to try to rotate it a little bit more to see how that looks. That's too much. So 
So I am going to keep it like this. And no, let's go back. So I'm going to click the undo button. And if you want to go back and crop it again, you can. You can crop and undo as many times as you want. Nothing is permanent until you click save. And even after that, you can still go back and make changes if you want to, just as long as you don't click this X button here on the right hand side to close that application out. So the next thing that I want to um, kind of address is the exposure option. And here under this, this selection, you can adjust the brightness, the highlights, shadows, and contrast. So if you wanted to go a little bit brighter, you can just adjust the brightness up or you can go down to where it gets a little darker. So I went up on the brightness just a little bit. And you can also play with shadows as well. But in this particular photo, I don't really need any shadows in it. So I'll leave that alone. And once you play with it to get it where you want, just click apply and all of the changes are now set. Now, like I said, again, if you want to go back and redo it, just click the undo button up at the top, the undo arrow. So the next um, thing that I want to do is go to the text button on the right, on the left hand side. So this option allows you to put text on top of your photo. Now the wheels are turning right here. Sometimes PicMonkey is very slow but it's free so you kind of have to roll with it okay so now in order to add text these are all of your font options here on the left hand side now you see the ones with the orange crown that means that those are premium fonts and you have to pay for them but everything else that does not have the crown next to them those fonts are free so what you want to do next is click the add a text button and it'll add a white text box over your photo. So you can choose the font. I'm going to just pick a random font and then double click on your text box and type in the text that you want. Now over to the right hand side, there's a text box where you can edit the color, you can edit the size, um, but you have to click off of it and then click back on and select the color. So I'm going to go with the purplish pink. So now that I have my color, um, I'm going to go ahead and bold this and center. Once I have the color that I want, the size that I want, I can click off of the text box and then your option menu will go away. So of course I don't want the text right here in the middle of the photo. So I'm going to click back on it and just move the text box up to the top. And when I'm done with that, I just click back off of it. So you can add any of these texts. You can actually go back, click on the box, and change the font again if you want to. So I'm going to change that font. And it just, just click on any one you want, and it will automatically change the font for you. They have several different fonts. I mean, some of them are kind of weird, but... They're all free, except for the ones with the, the orange crown. Okay. 
Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about is overlays. Now what overlays are is basically you're putting um, shapes and sizes or um, if you have a logo, you can actually put that on top of your photo. So what I'm going to do, um, like if you see on the right, the left hand side, again, if you see anything with a little crown underneath it, that means that that is a premium feature that you have to pay for. But any, anything else is free. So you have anything from arrows to sunglasses to lips, um, emoticons, everything. So what I'm going to do is select a banner. And you, that's all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to click on banners. It's going to let me select the banner that I want. I'm going to go with this second one. So you see that the banner has popped up over the photo and it's black right now, but I don't want black. I'm going to change the color, but first I'm going to resize the banner. So you can click on the little circle on the edge to make it bigger, or you can, this little circle in the middle lets you rotate it, but I don't want to rotate it. Um, I'm just, I just want it straight. Okay, I think I want it a little bit bigger. All right, that's the size that it, it, I'll, I'm comfortable with that. So I'm going to move this all the way down to the bottom here. Because that's where I'm going to put my logo. So I don't want it black. So I can either go into this color box here and select a color, or if you know the code for the color that you want, you can just enter it in this text box here. So all Fs, it's um, six Fs, that is the code for white. So I want to keep the box white. So I'm done with the box now. It's positioned exactly where I want it. Now what I want to do is add another overlay on top of the banner overlay. So that's going to be two overlays that I'm, I'm putting on this photo. So I want to add my logo to the photo and I want to add the logo on top of the banner. So you can go all the way up to the top and under the overlay section it says your own. So this gives you the option to add your own overlay and all you have to do is import it from your desktop or wherever the file is kept. So I am going to select Oh, let me cancel that. Okay, so here is the logo. You can barely see it. It's right here in the middle. Now I'm going to resize this to make it bigger. Now this is a PNG file. So that means it doesn't have a background, which is perfect because when I put it on top of the banner, it'll just blend right in. So I'm going to move it down here to the banner. It's too big, so I'm going to resize it to make it a little smaller. And there we go. You can actually use the, the arrow buttons to move it up and down if you want to. Okay, so that's how you do the overlays. Now, all of this other stuff on the left-hand side, you can add borders to your photo. You can add um, photo corners. You can add a drop shadow. Then you, if you click on textures, you can also add textures as well. And again, all of the options with the crown are premium features. So...
I'm just going to click on some random stuff. I don't want this on my photo, but if I wanted um, a paper option, I can click on paper and select the texture that I want. And let's go with the crumpled paper and I click apply. Do you see the slight crumpled effect over the photo? And if I don't, if I want it a little bit more defined, I can actually play with it with the brush shot size and the hardness. So if I click on these, it will actually change. So let's do another paper. And it made it a little darker. I don't like that one. Okay. So you can play with it to where you see the lines. So however you want it to look, that's how it's going to be. So like I said, I don't want these effects on my photo. So I'm going to click cancel. And then I'm going to go ahead and go up to the undo section and click undo. So now it's gone. So I'm not stuck with it. So I'm basically done with this photo. So those are just the, the simple features of PicMonkey that I use on a regular basis. All the other stuff, it's a little bit more advanced and it just depends on what I'm editing. All of these options on the left-hand side are actually great if you're creating a graphic or a photo collage or something like that, like a flyer. Those are the things that you would use these options for. But this is an easy breezy tutorial for PicMonkey. If you need a free online editing tool, this is the one to go with. Um, hey, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.